It's been said that once a Jesus freak, always a Jesus freak. And that's the way I feel as a first generation um, follower of Christ as a result of the Jesus Revolution out in California, uh, which uh, historically took place in 1967. Most people agree now there's a consensus that it really was from 67 to 77 as a movement. I experienced it as a revival um, in 1972 in Northern California, hitchhiking through Eureka, which very appropriately named city um, out on the coast there. And it's windswept, it's foggy, it's cold, it's nothing like people imagine California to be. And yet, since I was a kid, I was fascinated by these huge redwood trees. And if there was one place in the world I wanted to visit, it was this huge, beautiful, majestic sequoia redwood trees. And so to be out there, in a sense, was like a childhood dream. Um, but it wasn't a dream that got me out to California. It was um, my own uh, waywardness as a student revolutionary. I was never was a hippie in the sense of dropping out and um, living in a teepee, but as a college student, I was um, a student activist making anti-war footage films um, against the Vietnam War. I filled, ra I filled filmed <laughs> Coretta King and Ralph Abernathy, a couple of years after uh, Coretta King's husband, Martin Luther King, of course, was assassinated. Um, I demonstrated and uh, out on the campus and went to Washington, D.C. and filmed in uh, Washington, D.C. outside the White House and, and so on. And so, yeah, I was a student radical. But Jesus had better plans for me. And during the summer break of 1972, instead of returning to England, I got a backpack on my back and hitchhiked around 9,000 miles. I went north from Pennsylvania, up the Great Lakes to Canada, um, crossed the border into Canada, hidden in the back of Volkswagen Beetle with some draft resistors a couple who said they were on the honeymoon, but they were actually resisting the draft. Hitchhiked across the Trans-Canada Highway, whatever they call the thing, um, from east to west. And then, um, believe it or not, hitchhiked all the way up the Alaskan Highway, and this was before it was tarmac, up to Fairbanks and beyond, up to a place called Circle City, which is as far north as you can get on interconnected North American highway system up in Alaska and I was seeking truth I was seeking reality I was seeking be something beyond this mere materialistic world and that's what all the hippies were doing and that's what all the student revolutionaries well no not all the student revolutionaries but some anyway and this had been my quest the reality of a fair and equal world a uh, reality of a spiritual foundation that went beyond materialism. And I didn't find it in Alaska, needless to say. So I traveled down, hitchhiking down again, and ended up in Montana. And um, quite li the lifts I got were quite miraculous. Um, I won't share with you that story right now, or those stories, but I ended up in Eureka, California, very early in the morning on the 20th of July 1972 and I thought what am I going to do now I had one return train train I can't get a train from America to England um, one plane ticket returning me to England my native land and I had very little money on me and so I had breakfast 
and there were lots of hitchhikers coming out of Eureka and I thought if I go to Berkeley campus and get involved in the student revolutionaries there like I had a sense of a dark feeling come over me like as if I might never escape alive frankly and on the other hand I'd heard about these Jesus freaks through my friend Morris Allen who incidentally wrote and photo photographed the uh, Christian Life magazine cover magazine article in, that appeared in January 1968. He was a very good friend of mine in England, and he had told me, you know, go visit David Wilkerson, go visit this person in Clearwater, Florida, go visit Ted Wise in Sausalito, California. And so I was debating, what am I going to do? Am I going to see Ted Wise? with these Jesus freaks, or am I going to go to Berkeley and follow my student radical? Excuse me, sorry. Um, ambitions, whatever. Chap picked me up in a, pick, in a pickup truck. He says, you, get in the cab. A bit scary. I ended up at a place called Lighthouse Ranch in Northern California, Lolita, California. There's a half-hour documentary that was made about it uh, that's available on on uh, on youtube and that's when i had this encounter with jesus christ i mean an encounter it was no less real than if jesus himself bothered me had walked in the room and said jesus john i'm calling you to be my disciple for sake all and follow me that's how radical it was and that's how radical it was for so many of the jesus people back in that period of time, especially 67 to 73, 74. Because people were desperately seeking, desperately seeking reality and truth. And they had put their lifestyle on the line where their hearts were. And I think this is why Jesus was able to reach so many of us. Because we were willing to pay the price to find what truth was. Now, Let's not make saints out of us. Because the generation before had put their lives down the line in World War Two, and so many had died, laid down their lives for the freedom that we had in the 50s and 60s going on to this present day. And so in a sense, this Jesus movement is very much relates to what my father had to go through, same age when he was 20, when he was conscripted into the Royal Navy. So, you know, let's not say, hey, you know, how great we were. We were the disciples. No, we were making a decision based on the fact that who else can we turn to? You have the words of eternal life. It was a remarkable experience. We saw miracles just about, well, we saw them. They were happening continually, but we saw them on a weekly basis and not on Sundays during the during the week. Um, remarkable things taking place, remarkable uh, happenings taking place, the, pro, miracles of provision, miracles of, uh, of uh, saving us and calamity and so forth. So this is very different from the popularized image of the Jesus movement when it became something that gets sported from Los Angeles, Tinseltown. I'm not putting it down, but it was two separate things. The revival, which is the core of it, which primarily were people who were either coming out of the hippie movement, the counterculture of one form or another, and were being converted to Christ. And then you have this wave that went across America and around the world, of people from every background, many of them not from the counterculture at all, but mainstream American youth who would turn into Jesus Christ. And I don't want to put that down, I don't want to minimize it, because that's where God used it to raise up Christians, many of them faithful to this very day, to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. But the kernel of it, the seed of it, was this uh, unholy discontent with the materialistic world that we inherited after World War II. And I'm eternally grateful for that. Now I'm saying this because 
the Jesus Revolution movie, um, now I haven't seen it yet because I'm in the UK, we haven't had a release date yet for the film. But this Jesus Revolution movie, what I realised talking to people and and listening is that later generations, people younger than me and my other compatriots in crime, in the Jesus movement, younger generations are struggling and grappling to understand what the Jesus movement was all about. And so I'm here to share that just a little bit and to try to unpack that a little bit and to differentiate between the movement as it became and the revival which sparked it in 67 going forward. There is a distinction. I think it's a very important distinction to make. Um, and in any revival, you get messy stuff. And it was no different with the Jesus movement. We had cult groups spring off from it. But we also had incredible expressions of faith, incredible expressions of of surrendered life, of humility, of men and women who were discovering their lifelong call in Christ, who were willing to put their entire futures into the hands of God and allow God to reshape the vision they had for a future. And I'm privileged and honoured by our Lord Jesus Christ. I was one of them that I lived among them, I lived in Christian community for the majority of the 1970s, both in America, in California, in St. Louis, Missouri, well, Seattle, Washington, Chicago, but then also in, in England. I'm so thankful that I'm here to live, to tell a story. Never thought I'd be able to, to be here for such a time as this. Um, after all these years and be able to communicate via video and social media the experiences that I had. Yes, it was hard, it was harsh. We didn't always have full bellies. We didn't get money, we didn't have luxuries. I didn't have a car for years. Um, but these things did not matter for the excellency of the knowledge of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. And he's seen me through thick and thin through the 71 years of my life makes me feel ancient but a few younger guys you know you guys in your 20s this is your day this is your chance this is your opportunity to face forsake all and to follow christ and to say you know what the most important motivation in my entire life is to follow christ and have a conversion of heart and i don't care what church you go to what you align to what tribe you're part of it's that conversion of heart that is fundamental to your walk in Christ, your future, to your success, which is, <laughs> success is a strange word. And Jesus, his most successful moment was when he cried out on the cross, it is finished. That was the height of Jesus' success. Because that triggered the action of heaven in the resurrection and then in the ascension and the sending of the Holy Spirit and the formation of the church. And it results in you and me being able to this very day taste and see that the Lord is good. He is merciful, He is forgiving. And whatever you're involved in right now, it doesn't come close to a matching the excellency of the knowledge of knowing and serving Jesus Christ from the heart. No buts, no ifs, lay all aside and just let's have total surrender to Christ and let's see the Lord do what he has desired and yearned to do in your life and my life ever since the day we were conceived in our mother's wombs. That's my message today, folks, and uh, probably one of the most important messages I've ever made in my life. God bless you. Keep him his face shine upon you. May you know his will. May you know what it means to be a disciple of Jesus, I pray. Amen. This is Johnny Rockwell here in Britain. You want to talk to me about it? Feel free. I'm here. God bless.